Alrighty, folks, we've uh, we finally started having some fun here at the U.S. Sport Aviation Expo for 2010. And we're, uh, what I mean by fun is obviously getting to fly. We had a chance to try the Carbon Cub SS. Now, we'd heard some pretty lofty claims that this was the airplane that you took your airport with you because it would basically be able to land just about anywhere, especially with those big Tundra tires. I've seen some wonderful beach video of this thing landing off the uh, western coast in the sand and just having a great old time and blasting in and out with abandon. And I got to tell you, it's not hype, it's real. Let's talk Carbon Cub and let me preface this outside of some of the instant experts who take three trips around the pattern and try to call it a flight test. That's not what this is. This is a first impression on a 35 to 40 minute flight in which most uh, I think all the envelope was explored, high, low speed to a certain extent. Nothing was uh, repeated and nothing was aggravated tremendously. Okay, let's start out with the very basics. First of all, entry and exit. Uh, it's a fairly wide open area. Step up on uh, the uh, big tundra tire, the step, stick your buns on the side, swing your legs in. For those of us with skydiving knees, a little bit of a trick, but as cubs go, better than most. And uh, excellent shoulder room, good head room, good hip room, outstanding visibility, great peripheral. The side posts are far enough back not to be much in the way during any of the turning scenarios that get you into trouble or take off or landing. Take off, two notches of flaps, firewall the critter, about the time you lighten the tail, you're in the air. In our particular case, 150 feet or so, and I'm levitating and I'm doing about 35 miles an hour. That's, by the way, into a 10 to, uh, 10 to 12 knot headwind actually slightly crossed, no big deal. Not a whole lot of aileron required to maintain position. Rudder directional, outstanding right off the bat. You'll notice that all three axes are slightly heavier than the uh, J3 Cubs or the Super Cubs that you're used to. At the same time, the overall uh, dynamics of control is tremendously more linear. And the nice part is just phenomenally great force feedback. Very little dead bend, no dead band, no mechanical breakaway. Excellent climb out, no problem, uh, 10, 1,200 foot per minute with uh, Fat Boy in the front here and a fairly good load in the back and half tanks. We could do far more than that, but of course, we we're at the uh, Sport Aviation Expo and we got bogeys everywhere. If you own a Cirrus today or if you're considering the purchase of a new or used aircraft, consider this. Avidyne, in conjunction with the country's leading Cirrus sales and maintenance facilities, has launched the G3R9 program that combines the purchase of a late model, low time Cirrus aircraft and the addition of the Avidyne Integra Release 9 avionics suite for much less than you may have thought, and certainly much less than purchasing a brand new aircraft. G3R9, combining the best airframe, best engine, and best avionics for the best value. Full power barely does 120 knots with those big Tundra tires on it and it flirted with about 118 flat out. It cruises all day long, really nice, delightful area, 22, 2300 revs, uh, right at about 95 to 105. There's a sweet spot about 101, 102 that it just loves to death. Uh, very good roll response, yaw coupling, outstanding. Uh, pitch overall, nice wide range, no mechanical breakaway, uh, very linear response curve all the way from a much lighter, of course, onset at uh, stall and sole flight all the way up to uh, high speed, where, of course, there's a pretty good gradient as you pick up speed. Overall control harmony is very good. Slow speed, uh, full stall, full flaps, that's three notches, uh, stick full aft. Uh, you need to kind of pitch it back to actually get to the point of break, and all you really get at the quote-unquote break, if you can get it there, is about a 10 to 15 degree uh, pitch negative uh, result, which immediately tries to climb out of it. There's not much of a pitch buck to find. Um, there's a very, very light, low frequency, uh, but uh, tremendously symmetrical oscillation that goes with a full flap break. It's slightly more pronounced with two notches, about the same with one notch, and barely discernible, but still there, uh, flat and clean. At uh, full flaps, you're going to be walking 25 to 30 indicated, and it'll sit there all day long. Um, we did a fair amount of slow flight in the 35 to 45 knot range, batting around 45, 60 degree bank. The overall roll stability suffers a little bit there. It's, it's not quite as uh, spirally positive, 
But outside of that, the airplane handles very well. And once again, because of the phenomenal peripheral visibility, you don't have to worry about yanking and banking. Cruise numbers, on, as I said on this, 22, 2300 revs for 95 to 105. Once again, just tremendous visibility. Great deal of comfort inside. Uh, switchology is just up on the front uh, overhead. You've got a, th a side throttle, and of course, the nice part about the Cubs is you can open both windows, open the door, and really get back to nature should you so desire. Cirrus Design's Vision SJ50 single engine personal jet offers exceptional fuel efficiency, flexible seating for up to seven, advanced avionics, and all the Cirrus safety features you expect, including the Cirrus airframe parachute system. With its V-tail design, the Cirrus Vision is technologically advanced, yet engineered to be simple to fly to allow owner pilots more lifestyle pursuits than any other personal aircraft. Learn more about the Vision SJ50 at CirrusDesign.com. Coming back to Sebring, got a chance to do the slip from Mars. That's two notches, not three notches. With three notches, you're getting a bit of tail blanking, and while you're tremendously effective, you can feel the force fall off with that third notch in pitch. And while it's still tremendously effective, you're going to have to use a much wider range to get the same result. However, with two notches and a good solid 60 to 80 degree slip, I mean, just honking right into it, you're well over 1,200 foot per minute, tremendously controllable. All you got to do is lessen everything and boot the rudder, and you are out like that. It just dishes out beautifully. Absolutely no time uh, the, the airplane consider any intention of departing. Felt really good. And with two notches crossing the threshold at 35 to 40 knots and about two feet high on the flare, I admit it, uh, let it pay out about a foot too high. Good, solid, very light bounce because of the big tundra tires. No scattering off to either side, no dissymmetries whatsoever. Hit the brakes, and by the way, 150 feet and stop. Take that. All in all, like I said, not a flight test, but a good solid impression of an airplane that I think is going to make quite an impression. Yeah, 180 horsepower sounds insane for an LSA, but the fact of the matter is full power, it isn't breaking the speed limit. It's just got too much drag, especially with those Tundra tires on it. What you have for 160K, though, is the ultimate LSA. If you like flying in the boonies, if you like grass runways, if you like landing on postage stamps and giving back change, this is your bird. Great harmonies, fit and finish, Truthfully outstanding. No sharp edges, no flaked paint, nothing that looked like it was an afterthought. I mean, these folks have been in the Cub business for a long time. They know Cubs like, well, they know Cubs like Piper. And the fact of the matter is they've been working on them for years, and I'm, I've just got a tremendously positive impression off of my first flight uh, so far in the Carbon Cub SS. And, yeah, we really want to ring this out. We really would like to do a full flight test on it. Uh, what I've seen so far is tremendously impressive, and it's certainly worth your study. For the Aero News Network and Aero TV, I'm Jim Campbell, and I'm going to go try and steal the keys back from the Carbon Cub. See ya.